everyone. Welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. In 2017, Rachel Lindsay found love on The Bachelorette with Ryan Abasolo. Now, thanks to the video on demand service Tubi, Bachelor Nation can relive their love story as well as other select seasons of The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, and Bachelor in Paradise. Today, I'm talking with Rachel and Brian about all of that, their recent wedding, and the possibility of some Bachelorette babies. I don't know. Welcome, Rachel and Brian. Pressure. Thank you. Welcome. For having us. <laughs> Thank you for having us. We're excited yeah. to be here. That was my way of just like getting that question <laughs> out there, right? I, I see what you did there. You know, because I don't want to be like your aunt, like, so what's next? But like I had to, as don't a journalist. Our family's been doing that. Oh, I'm no. sure they have. <laughs> I'm sure as soon as you guys were done with The Bachelorette, that was like the second question. No, not no? I mean, we had to convince our parents that this was the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, can you imagine if your child went on this show? Even if our, we talk about that, would we let our children? Because this show doesn't seem like it's ending anytime soon. <laughs> If our children went on this show, what would we say? I would say, don't do it. Don't, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's hard to believe that you can fall in love on TV. Yeah, and with the whole stigma of it being, you know, so short, you know, after the fact, we just wanted to get to know each other, and they were fully on board with that. They were like, take your time, yeah. And I do love that you guys have taken your time since the, the show ended, and you really, I know you got to work on your relationship and get to know each other, move in together, and you just got married. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Good. Thank you Thank so you. much. Yeah, we we just celebrated our month anniversary on the 24th, and we're excited. It's It's gone by so fast, and yeah, we have a lifetime to go. Let's talk about the wedding a little bit. I know I'm starting to see little sprinkles of it on your social media, but it looks yeah. like you guys kept it personal and private for yourselves. Why was that important for you? Yeah, I mean, for us, we originally were like, we're having a TV wedding. This is what we want. We want people to continue the journey with us. And we, we just felt we owed it to the fans. They saw us fall in love on TV. We want them to see it through. But then as we got into the real world, away from the cameras, really getting to know each other outside of all of this, we were like, I don't think that this is a good idea for us. We wanted to make it intimate, personal. We wanted to have control. At the end of the day, it was all about our friends, our family. We just want to celebrate our, celebrate our love. And, you know, it being on TV it was going to be produced. And, you know, we just kind of wanted to call our own shots. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the photos are gorgeous. I think we have one from, uh, we have a couple that I pulled off your Instagram and whatnot. Um, looking back on that day, was it everything that, that you had planned for and hoped it would be? Oh, there it yeah, is. we, I mean, people kept saying, what type of wedding are you having? And I would say, fun. <laughs> We just want to have a good time. We want to party the night away with our friends. And we did that. I mean, from people, it was till 2 in the morning. I mean, we shut it down. We didn't have some grand exit like you see some people have. I mean, we were like, oh, the music's over with? Okay. You know, people went to the club after the wedding. Brian left in house shoes. Yeah. People jumped in the pool. It was so hot. But it was a good time just celebrating love and life. That's all we wanted. Right. What happened to your shoes? Let me tell you something. Women out there... I respect you on a whole nother level right now because I wore uh, no socks. And these shoes, they tore up my feet. I was li literally limping with blisters the entire honeymoon. That's because he was getting down on the dance floor. Yeah, That's I was doing some dancing. You. <laughs> and I continued on. I literally put on slippers and went on the dance floor. At that point, I didn't really care. Yeah. Yeah. I love that your reception outfit was shorts, too. I was like, that's my girl. Because yeah. it was like, you can really dance. It's not, you don't have to keep on that big dress. Yeah, I, I kept saying, when can I take the dress <laughs> off? When can, has, does everybody have their pictures? I'm ready to party. I just That's all I wanted. I tried to keep the heels on as long as I could because I loved my shoes. And then I changed into flats, and I never looked back. And I read that you guys read your own vows, but you were kind of nervous to read personal vows, even though you guys met and fell in love on national television. Yeah, it, it's so, I, I love this shot. It, yeah. It's so different when it's, you, you're in this groove when you're on TV. You know you know what's coming, you know what you're doing, but to share my the vows and to tell the story, I wanted to tell a story with our vows, and or with my vows, and really just share the journey after the show, what you didn't see on camera. That was really important to me and I wanted to promise certain things to Brian and I also wanted to thank him for certain things along the way. And I have got shy all of a sudden. At first I was like, oh, we're gonna do vows, we're gonna do vows. And then I started to get nervous to be so vulnerable in front of our close family and friends. Like on, on on TV. ABC cameras, not yeah, so much, but friends yeah. and family, it's a little more nerve wracking. Yeah. yeah, we can't see the audience watching what we're doing. We all know y'all like that. But, you know, to have our family watching, I don't know, I just got nervous all of a sudden. 
such a beautiful day. Congrats on that. And and seeing all the photos, it takes me back to the beginning of how you guys met, which is why I'm happy that Tubi is putting up these episodes because Absolutely. so often now that we can see like the end, it's so fun to go back, I think, to go back to the beginning. Is that yeah. something that like is interesting for you guys? Yeah, just reminiscing all the amazing moments that we had. I mean, just from walking out of the limo to the proposal. I mean, it was all it's all magical. Do you guys actually ever rewatch oh. your you do. All, not the season, okay? I don't need to see my other relationships. We can just fast forward through that whole thing. But I love watching the moment that I first saw Brian. Aww. It is my favorite thing to watch and just my reaction to seeing him and the things that he said to me in that moment. I, I remember it so vividly. I couldn't remember his name after that, but I kept saying, where's that guy that spoke to me in Spanish? When's he going to come back around? I love watching that moment. And what's funny is that there's a, a fan out there, shout out to Vina. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she has literally put together like R and B stories from the beginning, and this one says that her voice is so soothing, so she puts on the clips and falls asleep oh. to these clips of our our season. It's 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 all actually amazing. She does an amazing job. That's really yeah. intense. Yeah, but flattering. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's really sweet. It's it's why originally yeah. we thought about doing it on TV. Yeah because we thought there's so many people who are invested in our love story. And so we wanted to continue that. We wanted yeah. to share that with them. And so we're trying to do that. I'm a little slow, so I apologize. We, we both are in sharing videos and pictures of the wedding, but we're gonna continue yeah, to do that because coming. we want people to partake in it. When it comes back to your season, um, you know, cause I'm gonna go back and rewatch it on Tubi. <laughs> Is there a specific, other than the first meeting, a specific meeting or episode that you really do love to go back and rewatch or just like brings back fond memories? Yeah, I mean, for me, definitely the first time that we met, obviously the proposal. Yeah. Um, also just- Geneva. Geneva, that was our favorite date together and that's when we really fell hard for one another. Yeah. And I feel like we took our relationship below the surface. You know, you, you've had, you chit chatted here and there, but it was during that date where we had that one on one time that night where things just went. I, I learned about Brian and his past relationships and why he is where he is right now and why he was on this season. And it was it was deep. Yeah, that Geneva date was like sealed the deal for me. I knew she was the one at that point. I think the only other hurdle left after that was just the family, which they love her and still love her today. So it's a wrap after that. <laughs> I love going back because this show, like you mentioned, has been on forever. Uh, and I know they're going to have like Tristan Ryan season on there and like their wedding. And it's just I think it's going to be interesting to see how the, the show has evolved and changed for you guys. Where do you think The Bachelor should go next? Because there's a lot of conversation about they pass over the Black Bachelor. I've, I'm with you, girl. Mike should have been it. But where do we go, Bachelor? Like, how do we keep it spicy? Uh, this. Uh... I'm trying to think. I'm trying to say the right things, you guys, okay? I don't need, I don't, I'm trying not to give you headlines here. Um, where do we go from here? I think there are a couple of things because the audience is changing. You know, Hannah was, is younger, Colton was younger. So you're seeing people, a younger audience come through. So you've got the, the older audience who's used to things being in a certain way. Now you have this, this newer audience where that's social media crazy and they, they, communicate that way so it's a little bit different so I think the show is going to have to evolve and adapt to the times I think that they're going to have to try to get ahead of like your reality Steves and these other spoilers and reddit or whatever else that there is to try to keep people engaged and I don't know I think that they're gonna have to break the fourth wall I think that they're going to have to and I mean if they want to use me I'm more than happy to do that do these interviews inside the mansion while the season is being filmed I think you're gonna to have to start seeing things like that and then on the other side I think you're gonna to have to start seeing more diversity I mean I've been preaching it it's the whole reason why I, main reason why I started doing the show and when why I wanted to be the bachelorette and I'm just happy that it worked out in the best way that it could but you're gonna to have to start seeing leads that look different I don't know if you've seen it, but uh, yeah, go ahead and clap. We can clap for that. <laughs> but I, I don't know if you've seen this on social media, but there's the picture of all the bachelors, and they have them all, all 24 of them in a nice grid, and they all look exactly the same, and that's disappointing. And even I attended the 15 year reunion, and I looked around, and I was the only one who looked like myself. And I'm just saying, it, they don't necessarily have to be black. We just need people of color in these lead roles. The audience needs to see 
diversity and culture and we're just that's just missing I just hate that the show isn't reflective of the real world I also I mean with your season it was so distinct for me obviously as a black woman I'm a similar age and you, like your final three men all had very different backgrounds and I feel like your the casting of the men on your show was more diverse so even if that's the benefit of having a more diverse bachelor or bachelorette then the pool is more diverse and they're more open you know what I mean you just there's just more representation across the board and it really just like we're back to Peter, you know? Yeah. It's frustrating. And I think that another thing I said, it, you know, on my podcast, Shameless Plug, Bachelor Happy Hour, just think, you know, if you want to listen or subscribe. <laughs> but I said, you know, the system isn't working as it is because we are seeing more diverse contestants come through, but they don't make it till the end. You know, it's almost like they're spot fillers. So how can we get them to make it to the end so they're in the pool of being considered to be chosen? How can we, how can we change that? I, I did, I'm talking to you guys, ABC, not you. you. They know who they are. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, and I agree. The diversity, the reality within the reality, I think is a good is a good point. I think age. You know, I think if you bring on an older, I mean, she was 31, I was 37, I was the oldest guy in her season. I just think, you know, older people. I mean, a 22 year old. I don't even know what I was doing at 22, but I certainly wasn't ready for marriage or a proposal. Um, so I think if you know you bring on older people, I think that that you know they'll be more mature ready for those decisions in life. And you actually have people, I think, finding relationships because they're old yeah. enough to put the work in, maybe, mm -hmm. that it takes yeah. after. Yeah. I do think Peter, though, well, I know we've seen the last two leads did not get engaged, or they were engaged, and then, you know, they, it ended in a terrible way. I think, I think we will see Peter get engaged. He just seems to be so open and ready yeah. for it. He already has his career. He's established. It seems like this is what's missing for him at this point. It's funny because the Bachelor, Bachelorette, you know, the proposals aren't as maybe common as like Bachelor in Paradise. Yeah. I feel like there are so many marriages and babies coming out of that one. Why do you think it's different? Why do you think there's like more marriages, more people getting down the aisle in that the, format? I think the format's different. Yeah. In Paradise, if you link up with somebody from the get-go, you could hang out with them 24-7 for the entirety of Paradise. I mean, here we're fighting for time for uh, the Bachelorette and it's, it's tough. You know, you go on group dates, you're not really sharing that one-on-one -on -one time and you get maybe two one-on-one -on -one dates. You gotta think about it. People ask, how much time did you really spend with Brian while you were on The Bachelorette? Honestly, including Fantasy Suite, like 24 hours. If you really think about it, if you add it all up, as opposed to Bachelor in Paradise, it's three weeks, all day, every day. So it's yeah. more realistic. It makes sense why those relationships work and, and ours don't. Ours are set up to fail. <laughs> Yeah. One versus 30. I mean, it's set right. up for feel no. the stats on that are just yeah. horrific. Um, do you guys watch Bachelor in, pa Bachelor in Paradise? Guilty. Guilty. <laughs> so what are your feelings about this season? Because it's been real intense. <laughs> it popped off with a bang, okay? <laughs> the text message yeah. scandal, text gate, whatever they were calling it. I mean, it was juicy. I mean, I, I didn't want to read them, but I had to. You know, we, we needed to be involved. Um, I, you know, I've, I've talked to Blake, I haven't talked to Kaylin and I mean, I probably won't because I haven't been the nicest in regards to that. So she probably doesn't want to come on our podcast. I know she doesn't want to come on our podcast and talk, but I, um, I, I, I'm gonna let you, I, I think I've said enough <laughs> when it comes to that. So no, I think, I think, uh, Blake certainly had the right to defend himself, but at the same time, maybe wasn't the right time. Like I think maybe say it at the end you know, give her yet again another opportunity to come forward and talk about how she was lying on, lying on him on TV. And if she didn't at that point, then, you know, maybe expose it. But I don't know, maybe it was premature. And that's why he's getting all that heat now, so. Yeah, you know what was tough with Paradise is that it started off so high. And then once we got past that, it was kind of like, ah, uh, okay. You know, I, it, I wish it could have been flipped around where we, we built up to that point because it was good but then we had the what there was a wedding right chris and crystal didn't they get married no yeah, yeah. see yeah. do you hear what she said <laughs> yeah didn't they, get I was like, didn't they get married that's why we didn't get married on tv <laughs> i would hate for somebody to say that about our wedding but it's true it was a whole episode there was so much drama yeah. can you i mean honestly no offense to anybody in this audience but we've never met 
really? That's what it would be like to get married in paradise. All these strangers at your wedding who you've never met before. No, thank you. That's not what I want. <laughs> Agreed, but I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you mentioned your podcast, Bachelor Happy Hour, which you do with Ali Fedekowski. How do you say your last name? Fedekowski. Fedekowski. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love it because it really gives me a chance to unpack just Bachelor Nation. So what has the response been? Because I do feel like it. You sometimes you watch these shows or these episodes and you need to unpack it. Yeah, what has the response been? I feel like I feel like people people hate me, then they love me, and then they hate me again. You know, I mean it's 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 a roller coaster. I'm an acquired taste. But what I love so much about our podcast is we say things that maybe you're not going to hear in another podcast. Yeah. What people are afraid to say, but they're real conversations that need to be had. If you want me to sit there and not say anything or walk the straight path, you know, you need to turn it off. You need to look away. I'm just telling you right now. But if you want an in-depth conversation about what this franchise is about and the people that make it up, then please subscribe because that's what we're going to give you. And we, we have these exclusive interviews where we really get to talk to these people right after they come off the show. And if we haven't talked to them, it's probably because they're boring. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Well, like you said, the whole fourth wall part could be something that helps the, the franchise feel fresh and new. I do think there's uh, more books being written or podcasts from past contestants. And it does, I think, re-energize Bachelor Nation a little bit because for so long you're left in the dark about things. And it's just nice to have like the continued realness and the truth around it. So, I mean, I subscribe. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I don't know how much longer they're going to let me keep talking. <laughs> I, every week I'm like, this is going to be it for me. They're going to replace me. But so far, so good. I think it's refreshing. People want to hear something new. Yeah, definitely. But if they take that away, you still got another show, Ghosted Gone Miss- Love Gone Missing. Yeah. Which I love. I mean, anybody who's been dating in this digital era understands the reality of that. Why do you want to be a part of that show? Well, I mean, I'm a victim of ghosting. Not, I wasn't the ghoster. Okay. I've been I've been ghosted, and it was at a time when it wasn't popular. It didn't have a and name. It didn't have a name. Yeah, it did. It was just like, oh my gosh, so and so disappeared. They vanished. I don't know what happened. We would joke and say Casper, and now it really is called ghosting, which is crazy. But it was. I just I remember that feeling of what happened? Is it something that I did? And now it's this epidemic where this is just how people break up with each other. And I don't understand it. I don't know why we just can't talk or text or email or, you know, I was joking, send a gift, send an emoji. There's so many things that you could do to let the person know that it's over. So that's what the show is about. It's about these stories, these wild stories about why people ghost. So we we try to find the ghost and we do an investigation to figure that out. And at the end, we hope that we can bring the two together. The ghost can say why the person ghosted. And then at that point, they can decide if they want to be friends or, or lovers, whatever they want to do, continue their relationship or move on. But it gives you the closure that you need at the end of the day, which you didn't get at the beginning of all of this. I think you're really doing a public service because I feel like now people will have the fear of being on this show, <laughs> so they won't ghost. Yeah, so will, it really helps. Yeah, we will pop up. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> that is a fear. People thought knock, we knock. were promoting stalking or things like that. No, everybody agrees to be on the show. We, we, we don't promote anything like that or any type of, we don't take stories that deal with violence or anything in regards to that. And uh, Dr. Abasolo. Yes. I'm interested for you, I've seen your, your lifestyle brand kind of grow in Dr. Yeah. Abs. And yeah. how has that affected your career? Because I feel like you had this kind of path you were on before the show. Has it sort of like elevated everything? Yeah. I mean, I think it gives you an extra responsibility just because you do have this platform now. And like all I want to do is just help people you know, succeed in their health and wellness Mm -hmm. journey. And um, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, I actually have a voice now. You know, you're actually influencing people and they listen to me, which, you know, coming off the show was a little like odd. You know, I would only have that local um, effect. But now, you know, I'm getting messages from all over, people wanting me to help them with weight loss and weight gain and, and, you know, just so their fitness goals or nutrition goals, how to eat. So it's like I enjoy, I'm doing what I'm doing. I I love what I do. And what are your hopes for growing that or... What's kind uh, of like your next phase? Well, actually, I want to open several more brick and mortars, but actually mm-hmm. just opened up. We just moved back to Miami uh, a couple months back, and I opened up my practice in Miami and Brickell. And uh, starting there, and, you know, I'm actually going to be launching uh, online customized, personalized fitness and nutrition programs. So, you know, I'm 
hoping that's going to take off as well. And, um, yeah, it's just everything's coming together. Yeah, everything is coming together. I love yeah. uh, I love when I look at couples and I'm like, there's so much life happening. There's so yeah. many things happening, so many positive things. So congrats to all of, to both of you on all Thank of that. You Thank so you so much. Yeah, that. we do have a couple of questions before we get out of Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Uh, first one right there. Hi, Rachel. My name is Nkanye. Hi. Um, my question for you is, how did you know that Brian was the one? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I will say it was not love at first sight. I and, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just I'm I'm such a skeptical and logical person. So it's it's something that I don't personally believe in. But obviously I gave Brian the first impression rose. So I was, you know, impressed at sight. Maybe that's the, the best way the Spanish? to say it, it, that had, had a lot to do with it. And so did that kiss, that first night kiss. But I think with Brian, I I knew, I said this earlier, I knew that he was either going to be my best friend or he was going to be the one at the end. He was going to be my fiance. And he corrected me and said, or both. And and he's right. He's He's been both for me, or he is both for me. Um, for me, it was Geneva. You know, we talked about that. It was that date. And it was, I constantly kept trying to find things wrong with Brian. And every time we talked, the more and more, he would prove me wrong. And finally, I was like, this man is exactly who he says he is. And it wasn't just what he said. It's in, in the way that he treated me. And also, I wanted my family to get to know him. I wanted my best friend, who's my cousin. You know, she knows me better than anybody. And immediately, she was like, when she, when she met Brian, she was like, that's what I was waiting for. That's what she told me off camera. That's what I was looking for. So, yeah, it was, it's, it was a progression. How about you? When did you know that Rachel was somebody that you wanted to stay on this crazy show for? Well, like, in the beginning, I knew that we would get along just because I saw her on TV. I saw her interviews. She loved sports. She was very personable, just easygoing attitude. I thought, okay, I can definitely, because I'm, I'm the same way. And when I met her and throughout the season, we really didn't have any issues. Like, it was just a steady climbing relationship and it was it, it met my expectations and more and I think in Geneva was really when like this is the one like all I need is you know obviously I want to get my family's approval I want them to love her and I was sold I mean I was like she was the one from that day because it was a pretty smooth ride what was your first fight like in like real life do you remember our first fight People ask, do we fight? Of course. Like, yeah. we, we have well, asked about the first one because I know, I mean, I, fights. I can't think of, I mean, even him moving to Dallas, it wasn't even a fight. He was just like, okay, that's where your career is. You're practicing law there. I can get my license in Texas. It was so effortless. Yeah. I would probably say it was probably something small, maybe moving in together, maybe decorating. <laughs> yeah, just I, bringing our lives together and, you know, yeah, little We're things like not that. The, the neatest people. I mean, I would also say <laughs> that definitely neater than Brian. Brian is yeah. <laughs> Brian is very positive, and I am very realistic. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say a pessimist as Brian would say so maybe sometimes we were on different pages when it comes to that because we just see things in a different way but it's great because I need more of that and and you know he needs more of me my realistic yeah. I think we bring the best out of each other yeah. Yeah. Aww. and one more Nice to meet you both. You guys are amazing. And Rachel, you're definitely my favorite season ever. Oh, thank um, you. Love your relationship. So I'm wondering, like we saw a good amount of Brian's mom on your season. Your dad, who's a judge, wasn't on the season. He didn't appear. I'm wondering how your families have kind of come together and if it's all working out. It's a funny story. We actually had the meet in Dallas. Uh, we all had dinner. She actually uh, flew my parents in for my birthday. It was a surprise. So... That was amazing. and It was his first birthday away from home. Yeah, it was my first birthday away from home. So she, she invited my parents over, flew them out, and we set up a dinner with my parents, her parents, and Constance, her sister, and her husband. And I think we knew our moms were going to get along great just because they have out there personalities. But then it was our dads. They're very a little more, bit more reserved. So we sat them at the end, and they sat across from each other, and we would look, peek over every now and then, and they were just talking the night away. We're like, we're like, I think it's going well. I think it's going well. We we were really nervous. I mean, we I remember when we got there, we were like, okay, she should sit here. He should <laughs> sit here. I mean, we were really trying to figure it out, but it was, 
it's the same way it was effortless for Brian and I, the same thing with our families. I mean, one of the reasons that we really connected, too, was because we were talking about how our parents have been together through certain things, both 40-plus years, and, and that meant something to us. And so I knew that our parents would have that in common as well and that they would be able to just, it, it would flow the same way that our relationship did, plus our love for one another. They, they knew that we both loved each other and we wanted it to work out and we saw a future together, so... Yeah, and I think that was even taking it a step further at the wedding. Now our extended families were going to meet each other. And I just think we did a great job when it came to having it be a destination wedding. Yeah. You know, we got there on, what, Wednesday. Most everybody got there on Thursday. And by Saturday, the wedding, it was like I had my cousin from Columbia talking to her cousin from Louisiana. It was Everybody was just getting together so amazingly well, and we just couldn't have been happier. Yeah. It's all positive and love with you guys. And that's what yeah. the that's what I always got from the show, from the season I'm watching you. And I, I really think that's why your fans are drawn to you guys, because it just seems like honest and authentic. And you're just trying to kind of navigate this crazy Bachelor yeah. Nation that we all love to watch. So thank you for sharing your story so honestly all these years. Thank you. Uh, and if you guys want to go back and start at the beginning, Rachel's season of The Bachelorette will be available and streaming on Tubi beginning October 1st. Put your hands together for Rachel and Brian. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us.